Let's continue with the back page of the concept review of limits, AP exam review. So back page here starting with 121. Uh, limit as x approaches 5 from the right side of 5. Uh, first thing we do is to plug in 5 into the expression. We get 0 over 0. So that tells us to uh, further uh, uh, simplify uh, the expression. So what we can do is in the denominator we can factor that out to be x plus 5 times x minus 5. The x minus 5 cancels out. We're left with 1 over x plus 5. And then if we plug 5 into the remaining expression, 1 over x plus 5, 1 over 5 plus 5 is 1 tenth. Okay, 124 here. Limit as x approaches 4 from the left side of 4 into the expression. First thing we do is we plug in 0, sorry, plug in 4, and we get, um, uh, we're going to get 12 over, um, 12 over 0, not 0 over 0, 12 over 0. And because we get 12 over 0, that normally should be a, um, a limit that, that does not exist. However, we're evaluating the limit as x approaches 4 from the left side of 4. So um, we can't say it does not exist. We have to, we, we may know that it's, uh, the graph is approaching a vertical asymptote, but we have to decide is, that, is the graph approaching positive infinity or is it approaching negative infinity. So now we have to resort to, uh, we, we now have to resort to using, looking at decimals. So um, a decimal value that's close to 4 on the left side of 4, it would be 3.9. So plug 3.9 into the numerator, we're going to get positive. Plug 3.9 into the denominator. 3.9 squared is going to be less than 16. So 16 minus uh, 3.9 squared will be a positive value, so positive over positive will be positive infinity. Okay. 127, as we approach x approaching 2 from the left side of 2, first thing we do is we plug in. 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 minus 2 is 0, so 4 over 0 is undefined. Normally this would be undefined or does not exist. However, we can't provide that answer since this is asking for the one side limit, so we have to um, choose between positive or negative infinity. So the way we do that is we choose a decimal value that's appropriate on the correct side of 2. So let's use 1.9. The 1.9 in for the x, 1.9 plus 2 is a positive value. 2.2 minus 1.9 is also positive. So positive over positive is positive infinity. 145, we're referring to the graph of g of x here. As we approach a from the right side of a, positive infinity. As we approach a from the left side of a, um, we're following the left branch towards a, so negative infinity. Uh, limits as x approaches 0. As we approach 0, we see that it's going to be a y value of d. So we're looking, if the graph is continuous through that point, then it's simply just going to be the order pair. Uh, limits as x approaches infinity, uh, we follow the right branch, it's going to go to c. It's going to level off at the y value of c. As we approach b from the right side of b, going up to positive infinity. All right, if we're approaching infinity or negative infinity, then we um, treat this like a horizontal asymptote problem, and we just compare degrees between numerator and denominator. So numerator and denominator are the same degree, so coefficients will simply be negative 5 over 2. Uh, if we're approaching infinity here, um, we're looking at the coefficients. So 4 over uh, de degrees are the same, so look at the coefficients. 4 over negative 2 is negative uh, 2. As we approach infinity, um, numerator and denominator again share the same uh, um, degree in terms of the highest degree they're both um, equal to each other so again we look at the coefficients so negative 3 over 2. As we approach infinity here notice that the denominator has a higher degree x squared higher than the numerator which is just x to the first power so if the denominator has a higher degree then the denominator will grow at a faster rate than the numerator so the expression will go to 0. Okay. Approaching infinity, numerator has a higher degree than the denominator, so we know that it's either going to shoot up to positive infinity or go down to negative infinity. So if we plug in a large positive value into numerator and denominator, we can just compare the signs um, and decide whether we're going to get a positive or negative value. Okay, so plug in large, um, let's say a thousand or a million into the numerator, we're going to get a positive value. Plug a large positive value into the denominator, we're also going to get a positive value. So positive or positive is positive infinity. Okay, 220 here. As x approaches negative infinity, 
Um, again, we're going to, we can plug in a large um, numerator has a higher degree than the denominator. So uh, we can plug in a large representative, um, large negative value, so negative um, infinity or negative 100 or any negative large number um, in the numerator will allow, will um, convert this to a negative value. Negative minus negative is negative, uh, will be negative value. If I plug negative, uh, large negative value into the denominator, I'll also get a negative value. So negative or negative is positive, so therefore positive infinity. All right, just to review continuity conditions, if we know a function is continuous if the order pair is defined. Okay. Second, um, the limit has to exist. And if the function is split between two uh, branches, then we may have to test one side limit and con uh, confirm that um, if they equal to each other, then we know a limit exists. And then third condition is comparing the results of the first two conditions. Um, if the y value is the same as where the limit exists, then we know that um, the third condition will pass. And therefore, if all three conditions pass, we know the function is continuous um, at that point. Okay, 31, find uh, the constants a and b such that the function is continuous everywhere. Okay. So 311 here, uh, we have a couple of piecewise functions. We have a, a, a horizontal line to the left of negative one. We have ax plus b, a linear function between negative one and three. And then we have another horizontal line to the right of three. Um, so we know that we know we want the function to be continuous. So that means that these three branches need to be connecting at their cutoff points. So that means this first function and this second function needs to share the same y value of negative one. And then the second and third piecewise functions must be able to connect at x equals three. So what we can do is, because we want to find the a and b values so that these two fun these, um, uh, this piecewise function will connect at all the, um, and all the potential breakoff points, we're, we're going to set up um, systems of equations. We're going to set the two e first two equations equal to each other, and then we're going to set the second and third equations equal to each other. So we know the first two equations must share the same y value of negative 1, so that means that negative 1. I can set ax plus b equal to 2, replace x with negative 1, so negative a plus b, or b minus a is equal to 2, so we can stop there for now and move on to the second, um, the second um, um, function equation that we're going to use. We're going to set the second and third equations equal to each other, so ax plus b equals negative 2. We know that these two piecewise must share the same y value at 3, so I can plug 3 in for the x's, I get 3a plus b equals negative 2. And now I have two, two equations, and I can just solve for one variable, um, plug into the other, and use that to help me solve for each of the a and b values. So uh, b minus a is equal to 2. If we solve for b on this side, b is negative 2 minus 3a. I can plug negative 2 minus 3a in for the b value. So negative 2 minus 3a represents b minus a equals 2. Combine like terms, negative 2 minus 4a equals 2. So negative 4a equals 4, so a is negative 1. If a is negative 1, then I can use that to solve for b. Negative, uh, plug negative 1 in for a, so negative 2 minus uh, 3 times negative 1, or negative 2 plus 3 is going to be a positive 1. All right, last one here. We have two piecewise functions, um, but we know that the function is going to be basically continuous everywhere except at a, um, because there's a, a hole there. And that hole, we want to see if that hole will be covered up by um, this y value 8. But we want the function to be continuous, so we want the hole to be filled at that point. So what if we just find the limit where the, the, uh, where the hole is existing, and then we can um, therefore determine what to do. So, but, we, but this is already predetermined to be 8, so basically we want the hole to be filled in at 8. So we're going to set find the limit as x approaches a, as x approaches a for the expression, we want this to be 8. So uh, if we replace the x's with a's, we get x squared, um, x squared minus a squared over x minus a. As x approaches a, we're going to get um, 0 over 0 because uh, a squared minus a squared is 0, and then a minus a is also 0. So we can further evaluate the expression by um, 
uh, doing difference of squares. So x squared minus a squared becomes x minus a times x plus a all over x minus a. Notice the x minus a will cancel out. And then if we reevaluate the limit, we can plug a in for the x. So a, x, a plus a is 2a. So we know 2a is equal to 8. If that's the case, then a must be 4. If a is 4, then we know that um, whatever this graph is, um, whatever, wherever the hole uh, is going to occur, will be filled in by uh, that order pair at a8.